So we started, right? Yes. Actually, it's hard to talk with audience when you cannot see audience, but well, I will try. I guess I'm doing it first time with like when audience inside is less than audience outside. But anyway, so I'm Yuri. I'm from SP Digital. This is part of SP Group. We're doing some digitalization things for SP Group. And I will speak today about uh, our transition, our migration from SaltStack to Puppet and why we did this, uh, what we learned that, why, well, what to do, what do not do, and things like that. And then I will say a bit about what's uh, next step after we will finish this migration. So in first words, migration is not finished yet. It's in progress. So we are still like maybe 40% done. But anyway, uh, so uh, what's the scale of uh, our organization? Uh, we have about 100 developers and uh, we have a lot of products. So our developers split into product teams. And so we as an infra team actually doing a kind of platform for our developers, for product teams. So this is usually persistence layer, databases, uh, all the stuff uh, which is common for everyone. And yeah, we are just six persons and we are running right now about 200 VMs in Azure Cloud. We have on-prem part as well, but I will not talk about this part here in this talk because it's, it's complicated. So yeah, usual question when you see the topic, uh, what's wrong with salt? Uh, I guess someone using salt here? No? Someone using Puppet here? Someone monitoring YouTube channel for comments? Yes. Okay, so let me know if there will be any question uh, in the flow. Okay, so what's wrong with Salt? First thing, actually, when I joined the company, I started to use Salt first time. I had some background with Ansible and Puppet already, and it was like first meeting with Salt. Uh, so, it was a bit hard for me, like I hit hard into this. Uh, so main, uh, when I will explain what's wrong with salt or why, why I, I prefer Puppet, I will explain it from point of view of team. So this is team-wide uh, meaning. So why it's good for team or why it's bad for team. Because if you are just alone uh, doing things, uh, you will just use what you like. But if you are working in a team, you need to take care about the team. So, yeah. First thing is I feel it inconsistent. It doesn't mean it's inconsistent in terms of managing virtual machines. So if it applied state or applied some something on virtual machine, it will be applied there. So it's consistent. But I'm talking about different inconsistency when you know, when you doing similar things in different modules, in different states, and they behave in different way and they have different names. So in some state you, you can see like uh, names like installed and, or present. In another module you can see similar things named differently. And this is like, you, so you need to keep a lot of uh, names, a lot of context in your head when you read in something and when you debug in it. So then it's actually error prone. So uh, for example, you can do mistype, like do a typo in and write require instead of requires. And you will never know about that. The only way to know that is apply and see that the actual steps uh, so did they are different one from what you expected. And there is no way to see that. Uh, and actually, yeah, I typed it a bit earlier, but anyway, so it's hard to debug because 
diagnostic messages are about nothing. Like, hey, there is some error. I cannot compile a data set, for example. I, uh, so it's really hard to understand what happens and where is the error. Uh, it, it's even worse when you write a lot just before and then you try to apply it first time and you see that, hey, there is error in somewhere. Then it's YAML. Well, YAML is good and the bad at the same time. Uh, it's good because it's easy to write and more or less easy to read. Uh, yeah, it actually it's more or less easy to write as well because you can hit things like no, which is false, and you never know about that until you hit into that. Uh, but when you're reading YAML every day, like hundred, few hundred lines of YAML every day, and debugging it, so even you're using it as a language, like programming language, uh, I feel it's wrong. So it's not programming language; it's uh, it's declarative configuration language. It's different. So I guess YAML is a bit overhyped, and people already started to mention that. So, next. This is actually most critical part, I'd say. Because I'm okay with Jinja in Ansible because they did it in more or less okay way. But Sol did it in a really wrong way. They applied YAML, uh, they applied Jinja on top of YAML. So they generating YAML by Jinja, uh, actually. And so if you need some iterations, like you need for loop or some to do something, or you need some conditions, you need to write Jinja. And this Jinja will, like, between those Jinja blocks, you will write YAML. Uh, it's okay if you're writing just, I don't know, a single state for 100 lines, but if you have 1,000 lines and complex logic there, uh, I'd say good luck with debugging that because it's it's hell hard. So, and next, which is actually uh, because of previous one, so you cannot lint it because to lint it, you need to do parsing of Jinja, so you need to write core of salt to do the lint, which is, again, it's insane. Uh, firstly, uh, initially I wrote this, because this this was my impression, so I spent a few days trying to find some unit testing for salt. I didn't found. Uh, but recently I just mentioned it, there is salt check. It, it just happens accidentally, I saw it somewhere. And then I realized that it was three years ago already, but nobody know about that, it seems. So I didn't found it in Google, at least. I checked. Uh, Git history yesterday, and yeah, it's from 2017. There, I don't know why why it was so uh, hard to find it. Okay, so this is my impression from Salt. Why I don't like it from team view perspective. Uh, so why Puppet again from team view perspective? Yeah, this is actually wha what I will talk about today. But seriously. Uh, first of this, it's actually the same with salt, right? Salt have agent, puppet have agent, so it's more or less same. I will not keep here more time. So then it uses domain specific language. So this language actually is specially designed for task area. So it's not YAML. So you can write meaningful constructions, meaningful things in meaningful language. And it's declarative. Uh, and actually, I did mention it here. It's, uh, uh, I can say it's functional language. So it's immutable. You cannot change things accidentally, which is really good. So yeah, you need to take care about that. You need to write uh, maybe a bit more, but you cannot just accidentally change some parameter somewhere and it will affect everything. So then there is built-in support for syntax check, there is support for linting, there is support for style checking. So you can keep your repository, 
your uh, puppet coat in well, in good form, in good condition. Uh, which is really good when you're working in a team because team usually have different, like every teammate has different vision of uh, style and whatever else, so you need to somehow take care about that. With Puppet, you can just put LinkedIn with correction right in your CI CD pipeline, and you will have no issues with that. Then you can use AirSpec, the usual tool for Ruby, uh, Ruby World. And people usually know a bit at least ab about that, and it's really powerful. And then you can use AirSpec, which is really similar to AirSpec, to do acceptance tests. So this world is really, really good tied together. Then there is Hiera, which is, so if you're not familiar with Puppet, I can say this is kind of uh, mine installed, or this is kind of variables. Actually, I almost forgot Ansible, but yes, it, it was variables there. So single database of settings which you will apply to your uh, actual code, actual statements. And this is hierarchical database. I will spend some time later on this. And good thing there is parameters out to look up, but I will explain it a bit later as well. And then it's written in Ruby. Uh, so you can use anything which is done in Ruby world. The whole Ruby ecosystem, which is actually really great I entered that world really late, just maybe a year or two ago, and I still think it's really nice because it's it's very very well designed. So next question is why we decided to go with open source Puppet, why we didn't get Puppet Enterprise. That good question, and the answer is actually simple because we can. Uh, I see no real reason. Well, I'm okay to pay money for good thing. It's, it's it's okay, but I don't like to pay money for thing which actually limiting you. So, and I don't like having a graphical user interface because this is actually making you. Well, usually not you, but someone might decide to. Okay, I have graphical interface, so I can just do anything there. And nobody know what actually happens after. Like they changed some parameters, and there is no code behind that. So I'd prefer to put everything into a Git repo, and then I have I have audit because I, I can see transactions there. I, I have everything there. I have visibility. So for me, as a for developer, for uh, old school sysadmin, even it's still better. I don't like changing things directly. So that's why. Uh, we did that, but maybe we'll change our uh, our decision later. But because of Pipet Remediate or things like that, or Pipet CIS compliance, so it still can be changed. Uh, yeah. So, but uh, usually people complains when you're talking about Pipet. People will say, hey, it's hard to use, it's hard to learn, it's complicated, I don't like it, I will just run Ansible, I write 100 lines of YAML and it's okay. Yeah, if you manage it, I don't know, 10 virtual machines and you're just doing it once, like after deployment, well, yeah, it's okay, just use Ansible just or Puppet Bolt, they're doing similar things. Uh, but if you're managing 100 VMs or more, or thousand servers like we did in Lazada, in Pre Alibaba Lazada. Uh, you will see that appliance states every time from set of servers like that pushing model actually do not work well in that in that situation because every time you will see that this server cannot be connected via SSH because of network drop, or something happens, or something else. Or you will forget to apply changes if you're doing it manually. So you change it your states and apply it to subset of servers which you actually, uh, for which those changes was intended. And then you forgot about the rest and then you change something else. Then you go to new server, apply it there and see it doesn't work anymore. So I prefer if you just push it to Git and then magic happens and your changes are applied across the fleet. 
So you don't need to care about every single server. Yeah. And yes, uh, about second case, I'm actually pretty agree with that. Development is getting slower because you're starting to write unit tests. This is the main reason of that. Uh, I'm spending maybe 50-50% of times like reading manifest, reading, I'm not doing the test driven development, I'm usually reading code and before then reading test for it. Then during the reading test you realize that, well, I did something wrong and you change the code, you update some tests, so it, the, those iterations actually take time. But after that, I'd say in 90% your code will work more or less okay. So you will not hit into big issues. At least you're checking the logic before it hit production. So you're not debugging it in production like you're doing, like you're doing it with Salt or Ansible maybe. Uh, but yeah, you can write unit tests for Ansible as well. And now I can say that you can write it for Salt. So please do if you are using it. So. I don't know, maybe audience have different, have heard something else about Puppet, why it's hard to use or why don't they don't like it. So I'll, I'd like to know about that so I can maybe mention something about that during my talk. So oh, please gather some something if people will mention. So we have an invitation from the speaker for um, their own experiences with Puppet specifically? What's, what's good? Or is it, you're asking about Puppet? Uh, yeah, why, why people do not choose Puppet or why do they don't like Puppet maybe? Because I'm a bit biased. I really like it because I saw really nice installation of Puppet in Lazada. So I understand how it works and why it's good for big team, for, for big distributed team even. So, well, anyway. So if something happens, let me know. Okay, I will continue then. So now I will start talking about Puppet. Uh, and the main slide of this talk, I'd say, Puppet is about the state. This, this is all you should know before you're starting to use Puppet, actually. So when you write your code and some manifest, so-called manifest, it will push it to so then you need to deploy it to Puppet Master and Puppet Master will compile it. So yeah, it's compilation. It's not like uh, interpreting it step by step. So it will compile it into catalog, which is entity holding all the states. So this is definition of desired state to which you want to bring your system. And then when agent come from node, Agent asking for catalog for this node, and then apply the changes according to the catalog for this node. So, agent actually executing some Ruby providers, passing them catalog, and those Ruby providers change your your system to be in this state. So you don't need to, yeah. So it's not sequence of steps how to bring system to this step. So to, to this uh, state. It's actually, it is the state. So you don't need to care about steps, how to bring it. Like in Ansible or Salt, you usually, you can see that people are writing steps like uh, download this file, then execute some command, then do this, do that, install this package. So this, you can consider this a state as well, as long as you are caring about uh, immutability. So when you, so if you will, uh, apply it again, it will be in the same state. Here you don't need to care about that more or less. Well, you can hack it, but usually you don't need. So you're defining the state from the beginning. Okay. So, but this actually give you some, there are some drawbacks of this. So you cannot easily, uh, or a name or move file if you are not managing it. So if you want to change to rename some file on some uh, virtual machine, you cannot do that from your Puppet code because there is no state for this. It's not state, it's change, it's transition. 
And then you cannot read file from uh, agent, from node, and then make decision on your in your code on Puppet Server because your Puppet Server have no idea. Well, it have idea, but I will speak about that a bit later. But you cannot just read file from that. Then you cannot just execute some binary and do something depending on, on the result of this that bin binary call when it happens or your agent because again your master your puppet master have no idea about uh, what happens on agent it it's different way but you can see stars here which actually means that well there are some ways to do thing and the easiest way is to use facts so if you want to read file you can create fact which contain in contents of this file but it may hit you hard after so be careful about that, about that. Then, again, this means that you need to care about things like when you're changing state, uh, when you're doing transition of state. Like, you cannot just rename file. Uh, so if you had some file before and then you decided to rename it, you need to remove old one and then you need to create new one. So it can be just next line in your manifest, but anyway, you need to take care about previous file. Nobody will remove it for you. Uh, yeah, and usually after you remove something and you think, okay, it's already applied, right? I can remove it. It doesn't mean that it's already applied because some virtual machine may be down in that during that period or they may maybe some network drop in so some catalog maybe not appears yet on some subset of your servers. So in Lazada, we decided to keep it for one month. In SP Digital, I'd say, well, we have small fleet, so for us, I guess one day or seven days should be okay. Because we are running Puppet every 13 minutes, I guess nothing should stay down for more than one, one day or seven days at least. Then, yeah. This is another thing uh, which uh, is good to know before you're starting to do things. So if you need to do changes on different nodes in specific order, you cannot do it easily with Puppet. Because usually Puppet, is, Puppet agent is running once per period, like once per 30 minutes by default, or once per hour, how you set it. And there is no synchronization between different agents, b between different nodes. So you need to take care about that if you need this. Or maybe you would prefer to use orchestration for this. I will say about that a bit later, uh, so we can return to this. Okay, so then I will explain how we are going to use it and how we are using it. Uh, yeah, so. This actually, again, this another main slide of this talk. So if you are going to use it, use it in this way. So you please use Git, please use your any CI CD software you like. We are using Jenkins and GitHub Enterprise, but before in Lazada we were using GitLab, and GitLab actually quite, I'd say I, I miss it now because it was really easy to use, and you have Git repository and uh, CICD in the same box, so just, just out of the box. Okay, so then I heard and I saw actually people just reading manifest right on Puppet server, right in environment directory, without any version control, without anything. It works, but it works for some short time. After some short time, you will hit into some issues because it's hard to manage and it's hard to check. I prefer, I'd say, please start with Control Reaper from, from the beginning. Make it, uh, this is actually Git repository when everything you write, to sites, all your manifests, and there is your higher data and there is uh, your test and maybe something else, you know, some useful scripts or whatever else. Uh, so. This is definition of that. Uh, when you're starting, it's really nice to have some example, and there are three links to useful examples. 
first one is Puppet Lab's own example, uh, but there are no tests at all. So it's just pure repo with Puppet uh, skeleton, and that's all. So there is no respect configuration, nothing. So a friend of mine, actually my ex colleague from Lazada, did another uh, control repo skeleton, which is based on what we had in Lazada. It's more or less same as uh, Piper Labs one, but there are RSpec uh, helpers already pre-configured. So you can just start reading tests there and you will have something. And there is P-S-I-C-K, I I I'm not sure how to pronounce it right because I don't know those people. Uh, so they provide some kind of building blocks for your repo, which you can use, but it's very specific so they have their own vision how it should be and that vision actually reflected by this repo. But you may find it like, suitable for your needs. So please read it. Then I'd like to speak a bit about uh, roles and profiles. So this is how your code organizes it in control repo. And so role is actually, if we are defining some configuration for layer fleet, we can we can have some roles there, like your server can be Postgres server or Jenkins master or Jenkins slave, or I don't know, something like Grafana or Prometheus server. This is actually role, role of this particular server. And Node usually have only one role. So this role doing this thing, like this role is Prometheus server. But this role is actually combine it from different blocks. Like if this Prometheus server, for example, and it's running in Docker, you need actually some th something to set up Prometheus container there, something to set up Docker there, something to set up virtual machine actually. Uh, so this, those things are called profiles. And yeah, different, uh, again, one thing about roles, I miss it, is that role have no configuration, it's just definition. So when you split in your code, shuffling your code between roles and profiles, usually you don't need to configure role, you need to configure profiles. Uh, it's hard maybe to understand when you did zero, oh, okay, it's already, yeah, I have a lot to say <laughs> today. Okay, so this is for example, examples of uh, profiles we have you can see it after. Then, next question, how to attach your role to profile, uh, I mean how to attach actual role and set of profiles to your uh, server. You can use uh, hostname, like match by hostname, but please do not do that. Do not encode your metadata into hostname. This is wrong way. Then you can base on trusted facts. So when you're generating certificate in Puppet, you can put some data inside and you cannot change it as the uh, so only way to change it to regenerate uh, certificate. So we are using this way now. And then Mox, the flexible way is to write something which will assign this for you, which is called external not classifier. I actually didn't show any examples around, but I'm pretty sure that there's something on GitHub. And then higher can be used as ENC as well. Then I guess I will skip most part of higher because I'm short of time already. And yeah, so this is just database. So this is configuration you can see after. Uh, and here is how it's reflected. So you do define layers of your hierarchy and it's going from top to down. So and last one wins. So if you have something specific for your node, you can write it in node specific. Then another nice thing about Hyera is doing parameter lookups for you. So if you define class, you can specify the values of these parameters of class in Hyera. You're, you're uh, yes. essentially out of time. I'd wrap now, please. Okay. I heard, uh, it's uh, 40 minutes, right? Uh, no, it's but a 30-minute slot, so you're a 25-minute talk. Oh. Okay. So let me then... And you're already two minutes over. Oh, <laughs> so why? Yeah, I, know. I, I, I was I, sure I actually I did it. Uh, I will do it really faster. William has okay. willing to go a little bit of time. Take take a few minutes, but, but please okay, don't okay. take more than that. Uh, I will 
skip part, but uh, so how uh, about CI/CD? Uh, this is steps you usually need in your CI/CD. Uh, next slides will be about uh, what software to use to, to do that steps. First of all, there is Puppet Development Kit. This is really new, and now it support control repos as well. So this bundle of software, uh, everything you actually need in your Puppet development. Please uh, check it out and use it. Then there is lint, syntax checks, search speak, one server doing integration test, then Puppet Litmus doing acceptance test. So those wrappers actually doing a lot of things uh, uh, so you don't need to care about, just please use them and that's all. Then this is what you need to deploy. So you don't need, you don't need to deploy tests, for example, on your Puppet server. Uh, usually I have just this set of things. And how to deploy is actually, you will see that. Your task is just to bring this code to this particular place on your server. And then there is workflow for workflow example, like you're doing checkout, you're changing things, pushing it to server, CICD doing branch and deploying it to Puppet Master as a branch, as an, as an environment. Then you go into server, you can apply it on that server, this particular environment. And then if it's actually okay, you just doing usual things like doing PR and merging it into master, or actually in in production, so master branch usually call it production uh, in Puppet uh, world. Yeah, and having fun after. So I'll skip part about secrets because I have no time, but you can read about that. Then orchestration. There is no orchestration on an open source Puppet, but you can use those tools. And we actually decided to go with Corea, latest one which is uh, framework actually, it's not solution. So you need to write a lot there. Uh, here are some examples of what you can achieve. It's actually a successor of M Collective. That's why the binary call it MCO, but it's changing. So you can see, and this is really nice thing. You can write playbooks, uh, orchestration playbooks in Puppet DSL, which means you can use same language for configuring things and for orchestrating these, those things. For example, here is my playbook doing OpenCSDB cluster restart. And you can refer to it later because I cannot say it's well documented, but you can at least have some examples. Then, yeah, this is what I did during migration already and what I'm doing right now. You can see that, well, it's not yet published, but I'm working on open sourcing it. So one day I hope I, I will be able to share it for free in, in GitHub. And this is where we are going after. This is uh, immutable infrastructure. In short words, that means that you are not managing virtual every virtual machine. You are managing image of virtual machine, like we're doing it with images for Docker. And then you're just recreating your virtual machine based on that uh, image. It sounds really great because you have immutable things, but I have a lot of questions I cannot find answers for. So this is set of questions which are open for me, so maybe you can suggest me something here. And thank you, sorry, for like compressing so much information in small time. And if you have any questions, you can reach me in Twitter or in LinkedIn or in Telegram chat here. Uh, so yeah. Thank you so much. Uh, William, do you want to set up? And uh, while he's doing that, I've invited questions from the YouTube channel. Uh, questions in the room or comments? Feel free to ask. So you are looking for UI for provisioning or for UI for monitoring? Uh, 
OK. OK, so we are using Terraform for provisioning uh, because we are running in cloud. Uh, and, but we have on-prem, and when we're thinking about going on-prem, well, it, it seems we will use Terraform there as well because it's VMware. But there is Razor software made by Puppet as well. And in open source world, there is uh, Foreman, which is doing more or less the same. And But it's mostly UI and set of things around well, actually, everything is set of things around uh, DHCP and uh, boot that those boot protocols. But you can refer to uh, Foreman and Razor. And then for monitoring, well, it depends on what you will use. We are using Prometheus and Grafana. And it's actually configured by Puppet. So just configure it by Puppet and use it. But that's it. Well, I think we should move on, given the, the time. Thank you very much, Yuri. Thank you.